In this video, we are going to solve the weighted set cover problem by using the graded heuristic. And now I am going to talk about the model that we already formulated. And we have our objective coefficients, and I listed those coefficients in these cells. And I have my constraints and my decision variables. So these values here are the constraint coefficients so i have my 13 constraints so each row represents a constraint and my columns represent my decision variables so if i go to my first constraint i see that x1 x2 x3 have a coefficient of one so that means i have one in here one for x2 one for x3 corresponding to constraint one and the rest is zero Constraint 2, x1, x2, x3, x4 have a coefficient of 1 on the left-hand side. And constraint 2, this is the row for constraint, constraint 2, this only this cell, this row. And x1 is 1, has a 1, x2 has a 1, x3 has a 1, x4 has a 1 as well, and the rest is 0. So following the same idea, we have the coefficients for each constraint and for each decision variables. So we have our constraint coefficients listed. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this to focus on the greedy heuristic. So step one for greedy heuristic is to look for the variables with a cost coefficient zero. If we have a coffee shop that we can open for free and it will cover some of the buildings, then we would go ahead and choose that coffee shop to open because it is free it's not going to cost us anything so i am going to have my solutions step by step each step i will get my solutions updated so x9 is going to be one and then it says remove all constraints in which x9 in this case has a coefficient of one i'm going to go ahead and look at my x9 column to see where it appears. It appears in constraint seven, eight, and nine. So here we see that the coefficients are one. So now I'm going to delete them. So we have three less constraints right now. Step two, if ci is greater than zero for any i, and xi doesn't have a coefficient of one in any of the remaining constraints, then xi is zero. I am going to go ahead and define an array di it is going to be more obvious in step three but i think it's a good time to define it di is the number of constraints in which xi appears with a coefficient coefficient of one so what it means is i will count the number of constraints in which my decision variable appears so count if function is going to do it for me i'm going to select the cells for each decision variable and then my criteria is one so cells and comma and one close the parentheses hold the bottom right and drag it to the right so this says x1 appears in three of the constraints x2 appears in four of the constraints x3 appears in four of the constraints and so on so it counts how many constraints include my decision variables. So the i is found by this method. And now, is there any decision variables that don't appear in any of the constraints? Which means, do we have any di equals zero for all i values? I'm not interested in nine, so I'm going to delete it because I know its value. I'm only interested in the remaining variables. So when I look at this, set of cells I don't see a zero so this step two doesn't apply step three for the remaining variables compute ci over di so I need my cost values I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste and then I need to compute ci over di equal sign ci is here divided by di to do it for all of these decision variables I need to hold the bottom right and drag it to the right and 9 is not our issue anymore and then I'm going to find the minimum of these values 
because we want to choose the variable with the smallest ci over di and then that is for x10 0.33 appears in x10 this means that my x10 is now 1 going to carry over x9 equals 1 as well and then remove all constraints in which x10 has a coefficient of 1 in this column i see that these three constraints 10 11 12 has a coefficient of 1 for x10 what this means is i can go ahead and delete constraint 10 11 and 12 They are gone. So 10 can be deleted here because it's not in my remaining variables list anymore. And now these values are updated. So the I values are updated after I deleted these constraints and my CI over DI and min value is also updated. And step four, if there are no more constraints, set all remaining variables to zero and stop. We still have constraints, so go, step, go to step one. This doesn't apply anymore because all of my cost values are greater than zero. So step two. Step two means do I, ha do I have any di equals zero? I am going to look at my di row. Okay, there is no zero values. So step two doesn't apply either. Go to step three. Compute ci over di. I already have them computed and the minimum of those values is 0.5 and it is for decision variable 3 x3 so x3 is going to get a value of 1 x3 is 1 carry over the previously known values and now remove all constraints in which x3 has a coefficient of 1 so these this column is for x3 and i see that 1 to 4 has a coefficient of 1 for decision variable x3 so these constraints are removed now step four do we have constraints yes we have three more constraints and we have to go to step one it still doesn't apply i still have all my decision variables with ci greater than zero so it doesn't apply step two do i have any di equals zero for my remaining i values so three is deleted from here because i know its value and now i see that x d1 is zero d2 is zero d4 is also zero in this case i need to say x i values are zero for these indices so x1 is zero x2 is zero x4 is zero carry over the previously known values and then i can delete them from my remaining decision variable list and now i'm on step three remaining variables i have my ci over di values updated here so these are updated values and the min is one right now and it corresponds to decision variable eight and now this means x8 becomes one as well x8 is one carry over the previously known solutions and remove all constraints in which x8 has a coefficient of 1. x8 column, it appears in constraint 6. Constraint 6 is gone. I can delete my x8 from my list. And now, step 4. We still have two more constraints, so step 4 doesn't work. Step 1, all of my ci values are greater than 0. Doesn't work. Step 2, do I have any di equals 0? In this list, no there is no di equals zero so go to step three for the remaining variables i need to find my ci over di values and it is already updated and what i want to do is to find the minimum so minimum is two and it corresponds to decision variable x11 what this means is x11 is now one and i am going to carry over the previously known values and remove all constraints in which x11 has a coefficient of 1. Okay, x11 column 13. Constraint 13 is gone. And x11 is gone because I already know its value. And now, step 4. We still have one more constraint. Step 4 doesn't apply. Step 1 doesn't apply. 
all my CI values are greater than zero. Step two, do I have any di equals zero values? Yes, 12 and 13, they have di equals zero, which means their values are going to become zero. Okay, delete them. So I got two more values in step three, step two, and now step three. For the remaining variables, look at the minimum CI over DI values. So minimum CI over DI value is four, and it corresponds to five. Get one more row in here, and X5 is going to be one. Carry over. And now I'm going to remove all constraints in which X5 has a coefficient. X5 appears in constraint 5 and it is gone. Step 4. If there are no more constraints, set all the remaining variables to 0 and stop. So 5 is gone and I have no more constraints. But I still have two more decision variables as we see here, X6 and X7. So what I do is I set them equal to 0. Now I can go ahead and compute my objective value. Some product, my decision variables are in these cells, comma, my cost function, cost coefficients, and it is 10. So my objective value, if I multiply these values by these values, then my objective value is 10. So one times two plus one times four, plus one times one, plus one times zero, plus one times one, plus one times two equals 10. So if I go ahead and copy and paste my optimal solution that I found by using Excel solver, what I have is, let's compute the objective value for the optimal solution. These values and the constraint coefficients, the objective coefficient, sorry, eight. I already knew from Excel Solver that the optim optimal objective value was 8, but I still computed it here to confirm. And what I see is the objective values are different. So greedy heuristic couldn't find the optimal solution in this case. So the optimal value is 8, but greedy heuristic found an, a solution of 10. So what this means is greedy heuristic couldn't find the optimal solution and this is very normal. Heuristics never guarantee optimal solution, but they may find the optimal solution as well. And if it can't, it's not a problem. So heuristics can find near optimal solutions. They never guarantee optimal solutions. And in this case, we couldn't find the optimal solution by using the graded heuristic. This ends this discussion.